private equity interests swirling around Australian listed infrastructure group Asiano. The issue of how well placed the company is to deal with future growth challenges is certainly in focus. The Business Channel's Carson Scott sat down with Asiano CEO Mark Rosethorne at the Infrastructure Australia conference in Sydney before the news was made public about the takeover interest. They began by talking about how the company is planning to further capitalise on the resources boom. It certainly is a boom. I think it's caught a lot of people by surprise. Um, it depends on the supply chain you're looking at. The, the resources boom in iron ore, for example, has got um, BHP, um, Fortescue and Rio uh, with their own supply chain, so they're coping obviously quite well with that. Perhaps where we get uh, tangled up in some supply chain issues is the coal supply chains in New South Wales and uh, uh, hopefully our entry into the Queensland coal market. So the issues of port infrastructure and rail infrastructure are very much on mind for us. So uh, a, a key issue for us is encouraging investment in the infrastructure so we can perform our task above rail in those markets. Who needs to be spearheading this investment? Is it a, a government, a local government issue or is it a, a, a sort of a pan company wide agreement? Yeah, I think it's horses for courses. I think each of the supply chains that we have in Australia, the export-related supply chains, um, arguably the ones that are in trouble, for example, the Hunter supply chain, where you've got structural issues, you've got different ownership between the port companies, two, two port companies, you've got um, ARTC, the federal government-owned track infrastructure, and then you've got operators, uh, QR and, and ourselves, Pacific National. Uh, so there's got there's got to be a better alignment, and that's either done through structural reform, i.e. the rail piece and the port piece are put together structurally, or be just better coordination between all parties. And of course the coal customers are an integral part of making sure that coordination piece is there. How much of your drive to grow the business is actually being thwarted by a lack of a national plan, a national rail plan to ensure you're not getting held up as you try and get these products to port? Well, it's an enormous problem with the interstate uh, a domestic freight task. Um, to give you an idea, between Brisbane and Perth, there's five different track owners that we have to negotiate track pathing, and we have to operate amongst all that spaghetti as well. So uh, then you've also got seven safety regulators state-based. You've got, you know, all that stuff compounds the issue. So uh, it's very important that the states... Uh, get on board with the federal government's wish and to, to federalise or nationalise those regulations. Where exactly are we with that? Well, this morning Minister Albanese um, uh, stated that it was his firm wish to uh, see that all gone. That's on the regulation piece. Uh, on the structural reform, i.e. all the track owners, we really are um, hamstrung by those ownerships. And I, you know, if I was dictator for a day, I'd try and change that because one party owning the track from Brisbane to Perth is an essential ingredient, in my opinion, to have growth and capacity going to our rail, our rail network. How much is all that bureaucracy you have identified actually costing you on the bottom line? Well, it costs us the, just the administrative burden of dealing with the regulators. Um, that's, that's sort of in the, in, in, the, in the millions. Where it really costs us is, is, is the delays that we have between the track ownership you know, we may have a train that's running on schedule on a, on a track, we'll get to the Sydney network and we'll have to stay there and wait and wait. And often it takes, I think the average is about six and a half hours to get through Sydney. So, I mean, there's all sorts of examples of how that lack of ownership really impacts us. And it's in the tens of millions of dollars, which all goes to the, our, our pricing. End of the day, though, it's all about implementation and not just sounding off. How much bite is there to the government's bite, do you sense? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I'm confident. Uh, the government has, uh, one, got a, a new ministry. Two, we've got uh, Labor-State Labor governments. I think that's a unique opportunity. Infrastructure Australia's been set up. The Building Australia Fund's been set up. There are really important decisions that have been made. I think you're right. At some point, we have to stop talking and the action has to come because the, some of these decisions are critical to maintain the country's national prosperity going forward. And they're all about the sustainability and reliability of our supply chains. 
Let's move on and consider the emissions trading scheme and the direct cost to ASEANO in terms of its day-to-day -day business. How clear and happy are you with the way government is leading the charge on all of this? Okay, um, on, the, on, a, on a positive note, uh, rail transport is, is very well positioned to take advantage of uh, an introduction of a scheme. Um, the, the paper issued by Ghana has suggested that transport will be included in the emissions scheme, which is is a world first. Uh, Europe didn't go that way, so that's a, very much a positive. Unfortunately, and I'm hoping it's a mistake, uh, rail was left out of the rebate scheme. Uh, so for the first 12 months, road transport gets a leg up, and perversely, uh, road transport is three times, uh, you know, uh, dirtier than rail in terms of carbon emissions, and uh, they've, they've got a head start on rail. So uh, hopefully that goes away. Have you heard anything from the minister to suggest that will be belatedly included? No, I haven't, but I can, I can assure you we're sort of knocking down as many doors as we can to make sure that that's changed. I mean, the nature of the paper is to encourage comment and, and uh, perhaps it's just an oversight. Asiano CEO Mark Rosethorn there with Carson Scott. That is pretty much it for Business Report for this Monday. I'm Brooke Courty, but from all the team here at Channel 602, thanks very much for your company.